Do you know how marketers are able to provide exactly what we want? Or for that matter, do you know how an insurance company can identify a fraud? <coughs> to know more, stay tuned, coming up in a moment. Hey, I'm Shreesh and you're watching Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. On this channel, you will receive tips and tutorials on personal development, data science, management and marketing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel and do not forget to hit the notification bell. In this video, we will familiarize ourselves with a very important data mining tool called cluster analysis. We will understand what is clustering, what are the various methods that are employed in clustering and how to undertake clustering. So without further ado, let's begin. Can you make any sense out of this picture? I'm sure it's not possible. Unless we were to club the pictures up like so. Then you can see a group of people, a troop of monkeys and a cloud of cats or the cat family. On observation, you will notice that these are groups or clusters of similar things that are similar within that group but dissimilar to other groups. As human beings, we are taught to recognize a pattern of features to identify and group similar items and separate the dissimilar items. We have over the years been trained to recognize these patterns. But then how do you get a computer or machine to do this? When we teach this analysis of grouping to a machine, we are effectively undertaking clustering or cluster analysis. In this analysis, we do not have the target variable or the dependent variable and hence it is called as the unsupervised learning algorithm. In clustering, we try to discover structures without providing an explanation. The algorithm does not classify, estimate or predict anything. It simply groups items into similar clusters. That brings us to the most important question, how to calculate the similarity or dissimilarity. Taking the same example of the human and cats, we can separate humans from cats based on the presence of a tail as one of the distinguishing feature. Further, humans walk on two feet as against four legs for cats. This way, we can identify more such features that place two human beings closer to each other as against cats. The similarity gets established based on the numerical difference or distance between two attributes for various cases. To elucidate this point, if we take the example of a one-dimensional number scale, 4 and 7 are closer than 2 and 10. The distance measure is therefore very effective in identifying similarity. When we move to a two-dimensional space, we use the Euclidean measure for the distance calculation. The formula is like so. Here, x and y are the cases and i represents the attribute values for the two cases. The following example demonstrates the calculation. We will calculate Euclidean distance for two cases on two attributes namely age of the person versus the blood sugar content. Substituting the values, the distance comes to 67.08. This distance is compared between cases to identify as close or far away from each other. The distance can also be calculated using other distance methods like city block distance method and Minkowski distance measure with their respective formulae. A point to note that Q takes any exponent value. When the value of Q is 1, we get the Manhattan distance or the city block method. When the value of Q is 2, we get the Euclidean distance measure. Finally, before we run the cluster analysis, there are a few points that need due consideration. First, we decide on the distance measure or metric that we plan to use. Each of them has their merits. Second, the magnitude of the numerical values can mess up the calculation. Hence, we need to run a Z transformation or normalization on the values before we can put them to use in the algorithm. Thirdly, categorical variables with binary or other values need a separate treatment before we use them. And finally, we need to start by a guesstimation of the number of clusters we expect to emerge. The final set of clusters is arrived iteratively. Once the cluster analysis is run, we evaluate the validity or performance of the clusters based on two points. First, within cluster distance should be low to ensure high similarity or cohesion. Second, between cluster distance should be high to ensure high differentiation. So now you see that marketers can identify like-minded consumers and their requirements. Using this tool, they then cater to their needs through a focused delivery of products and services. Even insurance companies can identify regions with high number of claims. They then identify the reasons for the same. Clustering is therefore a very important data mining tool that is employed by many business as well as non-business sectors to address critical problems. 
Finally, if you've enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and acquaintances. If you want to see more such videos, comment in the section below, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. Till the next video, stay healthy and stay peaceful.